So from the last lecture we had, we saw exactly how um, the packets move from layer to layer in the OSI model, from the transport layer to the network layer to the data link layer to the physical layer. We saw the encapsulation process, how it commences and how it uh, eventually goes on as the packet moves. So what is the guy? Host A sends a message to host Z. The information going through those different layers are encapsulated with control information. If you can remember what we called uh, PDUs. Mm -hmm. So those um, protocol protocol units. These are the things that the corresponding receiver will be able to make use of while deconstructing the stream to be able to read the data. So for this guy who is sending the message, the PDUs or the 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 encapsulation that happens at the, the transport layer, that encapsulation will be de-encapsulated at the transport layer of the receiver here. Likewise, the network layer, the encapsulation that takes place at the network layer here Will be de encapsulated by the network layer of this guy. The data link layer the encapsulation that takes place on the um, on the hosts will be de encapsulated by the, the data link layer of the receiver, and so on and so forth. So at each layer that encapsulation takes place, control information are added to make the or to enable the packet or the data move from one particular layer to the other layer we mentioned that the network layer uh, as a way of recapping we mentioned that the okay starting with the transport layer the transport layer encapsulation basically deals with either um, successful data delivery or unsuccessful data delivery so whatever encapsulation goes on there is to ensure that data gets to the particular hosts and to the particular application so the encapsulation going on, on at the transport layer will include source port numbers which is the individual host that is sending the message out and then the destination port number that is the destination application on the receiving host that the user is trying to get take for instance take for instance now let me put a little light on the port number issue Let's say this is a server that is staying somewhere on the internet okay and then this is you trying to access the internet now let's say this host now wants to access www.google.com he wants to type www.google.com now this server is the server wherever it's located that host that www uh, that host google sites so whenever this guy Types www. He opens he opens his web browser, and he types www.google.com. This system or the networking card or the transport layer will automatically assign that if if this guy has not because usually um, depending on the programmers those who manufacture the applications they get to they get to specify the port numbers directly. Okay. For a particular application let's say the google chrome browser it could have its own port number application so let's say this guy has his own port number application okay and that port number is 1028 for google chrome so when this guy opens the google chrome and types in www.google.com the google chrome has already been configured to have a source port number of 1028 either that or is a situation whereby the host the transport layer will automatically pick any free and available from 1024 upwards any free and available port number to be able to allocate to this guy so once this guy has a, 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 a an automatically generated port number as he's trying to contact um the the net internet by accessing google.com he's trying to access a particular application or should i say a particular service on the server so all those services because you remember we said that from port one to port 1024 are already reserved 
those ones have specific you know applications that they refer to so port numbers usually are a way of identifying applications that you want to access so in this case this person wants to access application that has port number 23 and maybe this is a telnet a telnet application to transfer something if the person wants to access the internet he will be accessing port number 80 so port number 80 helps you to know that okay the application this person is trying to access on this server is an internet application because this server as it is now can have numerous applications that it is hosting this server can host internet it can host data transfer it can host copy and paste it can host telnet these are different applications all of them being host only by this by this um server it's just like something similar to you when you have your computer with your computer you can have different applications open you can have adobe reader open you can have microsoft word open you can have microsoft excel open you can have your chrome browser open you can have another browser open you can have numerous applications working on this same host at the same time so each and every one of those applications that you're opening that requires networking take note to the ones that require networking microsoft word and excel they don't require networking those ones that require networking they will have their specific port numbers which is above 1024 whereas the applications you're trying to access over the internet on the receiver all of them too will have their own port numbers so when you specify that okay you with port 1024 that means the application on this system that has port 1024 you're trying to contact the, the internet to access a website www.google.com or jw.org all those internets this thing anything that has to do with the web uh -huh, it falls on that port 80 so the destination port on your transport layer encapsulation will be port 80 so once this guy receives that message and then it, it gets to the transport layer and the transport layer encapsulation is de-encapsulated by this guy who is the receiver when he looks at the destination port and sees that the destination port value is 80 he will know that okay what you're trying to do is to access an internet and it will now switch it over to the internet application that it is hosting probably we'll look more about it when we go down deeper and deeper but i just want you to know the kind of encapsulation that goes on at the different layers so at the transport layer this guy puts in it incorporates the source port numbers the destination port numbers basically those two very important things and then it now maybe specifies if the data is going to be um a a, a a packet or a datagram based on either reliable tcp or unreliable udp mm -hmm. so after that as of course as you can remember the sequencing is done the huge chunk of data that's on the sender here the huge chunk of data is broken down into smaller bits of data and then they are sequenced and then they are transmitted so once they are transmitted at the network layer the network layer now below will pick each of those segments that have been sequenced by the and take notes after the encapsulation of the transport layer the data now turns into a segment so each of those segments that has been divided into smaller bits and sent to the transport to the network layer below for transmission each of those network layers will now be encapsulated with network layer information okay or network layer encapsulation and what does that basically have to uh, in, in, um, entail those ones will now carry the encapsulation they will now carry the destination ip address and the source ip address of the network that it, it is being that it's that it's going to so the network layer tries now to identify which network this particular host is going to or to be able to give information about the network to switch the packets to on the router or on the um, layer 3 switch whatever is there to act or to perform a routing um, capability so the network layers they add a header that contains the logical addressing that's IP addresses in the front of each of those segments so each segment that is coming that is coming down from the transport layer is given this information and once it's given that information that segment now 
is now converted into a packet okay because at the network layer after the encapsulation of the network layer what you have is either a packet or a datagram as we mentioned okay so at the network layer and take notes at the layer below the, there's a segment there's a there's a field that will specify what kind of protocol acted on it on the upper layer take notes because remember encapsulation starts at the transport layer so since it starts at the transport layer after it has been uh, encapsulated into a segment and passed down to the network layer the network layer after doing its own encapsulation it will provide a protocol field as part of the encapsulation that will describe where the segment came from which protocol the segment came from from the transport layer okay so it could be either UDP which is unreliable or TCP which is reliable so that when the person receives the receiver receives it he will know the kind of you know connection or what to do when he receives it if the receiver at the transport layer if the receiver receives it and sees that it is a UDP to know that there is no need for it to send an acknowledgement to this the sender but if he receives the 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 information and sees that it was a TCP it will now know that it's supposed to send an acknowledgement you know all those things that happen with reliable data transfer mm -hmm. so each each um each uh, layer below specifies a protocol that handled the data on the layer above it okay so it can hand the segment to the correct protocol at the transport layer when it reaches the receiving host that's exactly what i just mentioned so that when the receiving host receives it it will know whether it will send this information to the udp or to tcp and once either of them receive it they will know the right thing to do next so we've talked about transport layer what happens so here says the network layer is responsible for finding take note for finding a destination uh, hardware address that detects where the packets could be sent on the local network okay this statement is very key and very important the network layer is responsible for finding the destination hardware address that detects where the packet will be sent on the local network it does this by using the address resolution protocol arp we'll talk more about it later at the network um ip at the network layer the internet protocol at the network layer it looks at the destination ip address and compares that address to its own source ip address and subnet mask if it turns out to be the local network requests the hardware address of the local host is requested via an ARP request as this address resolution protocol. If the, pa if the packet is distinct for a remote host, IP will look for the IP address of the default gateway, which is the router instead. And let me explain this statement because it's very key. Let's go back to this. Now, this guy is trying to send a message to this guy what that is saying is that after the transport layer has finished processing or encapsulating that data into a segment and it has passed it down to the network layer um, the network layer is going to find the destination hardware address that will indicate where the packet should be sent on the local network take notes anything even if this guy let's say this guy okay give me a second all right so let me be using let me be using this this picture to explain what that statement is all about now you notice that this is a router here now this is the router Okay, so this is the router now, and this is let's uh, let's assume that this is um, a host staying somewhere. Now, remember from what we discussed about how routers segment networks, you know that definitely this is one local area network. This is one LAN. The whole of this is one LAN. 
while the whole of this will belong to a different LAN or a different network entirely. So this is a whole, a, a completely different network, whereas this is a network on its own. Now this statement is saying that when a host is trying to send a message to a receiver, the router here will now try to understand which destination hardware address that it is going to use or it is going to encapsulate that data with at the network layer. How does it do this? It says it uses the ARP request. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. And take note, all those protocols at these different layers that are shortened, you need to know their full meaning. TCP, UDP, all those protocols, you need to understand what they stand for. Now, how does it do this? Eventually, when 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 a host, when you're trying, let's say this guy wants to access the internet. Okay, let's say this is this is you. You are the host here, and you're trying to access the internet. Now you open your browser and you type you type in the the information www.google.com or jw.org, and then you hit the enter button. Something happens behind the scenes. Now, when you hit that network button, Google, I mean, the your, your, your system here, having the layers one to, um, layers one to layer three, your system takes care of the application, takes care of the presentation, takes care of the session, and then it takes care of the transportation, all the encapsulation. Now tells Google, okay, whether it's gonna be UDP, and that one is not determined by you. It's determined by those who programmed or designed the application, the Google Chrome application. They, will, they are the ones who determine whether the mode of data delivery is going to be TCP reliable or UDP unreliable. So your own is just to use the application, but they themselves, they have programmed everything inside. So once you hit the Chrome button, you hit the enter button to access uh, www.google.com. Now, after the transport layer has finished indicating that okay um what you're trying to do is to access a particular site okay so this is this is going to be your like your your what's it called your source ip address for your own application is this and then the destination ip address is an internet protocol let's say layer 8 it finishes encapsulation and then converts it into a datagram now, you know, of course, as we discussed about, um, what's it called? Um, we discussed ARP when people are trying to, when this guy is trying to send a data to this person. What happens? If you, if you still want to remember, you need to go back to the first aspect of what we discussed. So when the message gets to the router here, the router will now try to understand which destination of course you being the host you have your own ip address so at the, at the network layer you have included your own ip address as the source and then you're sending it to a destination that you don't know so the 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 router here is going to try to understand where the information that you're sending where it's supposed to be sent okay now if it is let's say www.google.com you remember that we mentioned that these names have a corresponding ip addresses which are usually discovered um through the dns server once your information gets to the dns server that www.google.com will now be converted into its proper IP address, let's say 1.2.3.4 or something. Now, when it's converted to that IP address, the router will now look at that destination address, the destination IP address of google.com. That destination IP address of google.com is 1.3.5.6. And then it will now compare the address with its own source IP address. It will now see that its own address is 255.128.62.5 and it looks at the, the subnet mask so the writer will definitely know that the recipient of this information you are sending is not within the network that he is hosting 
because it will compare the IP address of Google and its own IP address. That's how it will know that when the IP addresses are the same, router will know that okay, the person you're sending this information to is within the network that it is hosting. But when the, the IP address informations are different, it will know that the person you're sending this information to is not in its own network, is in a different network. So it will now look at its routing table that we mentioned to try to see if it has any record of that Google IP address on where it's supposed to go, which interface that is supposed to send it to, which network interface is supposed to send it to. That is what this is saying. And it will compare with its own source IP address and something like that. If it turns out that the local network requests, um, if it turns out to be a local network request, that is, the person you are sending the information to is within its own network, then the it will it will the hardware address of that local host, the person you're sending it to within that network, the router will get it using that ARP uh, request. The same thing we did with Bob and Sally. The router will do that Bob and Sally thing to get the hardware address. And when it, once it gets the hardware address, it will now encapsulate it. But when it now determines that the the destination is not within its network that it's on a different network entirely it will look for the IP address in its routing table and try to know either if there is any record or any update on which of the interfaces the network is the router will send it to that interface if there is no no record of any interface that it has been sent that it has, uh, has already been programmed in the routing table for that Google address it will now send it to its default gateway router this default gateway router is an interface that that is that is usually programmed that if you check all the routing table and you don't see any particular match for any network look um, for any network okay because every network will have an interface where it will be sent out to maybe as we go further we'll get to understand things these things better so if it does not see any match then everything you do not find any match forward it to the default there's a default interface that it will forward it to so once it searches for the interface for it to send that uh, the message the request you want for www.google.com it searches through its routing table it cannot find any any programmed or any dynamically lent pathway it's to follow to reach that www.google.com it will look for its default router pathway and then get the the address of that default router and then incorporate it if, it, if no default router is configured on the router then the packet will be dropped because there is no way where the router does not know where or how or who to send the information through to. I really hope I was able to explain this for you to understand, but in case you don't understand, as we go on, we'll be able to understand it better. So the packet now along with the destination hardware address of either the local host or the default gateway, take notes, if it's a local person within the network, it will be the hardware address of the destination local host. If it's not a host within the network there it will now provide the hardware address of its default gateway that's the default interface that is supposed to send it to so after doing that network layer will be done with its own encapsulation and will now send it to the data link layer data link layer's own responsibility now is to convert the packet now into a frame uh -huh. It will now put some control uh, header or trailer informations to the packets in in a bit to be able to prepare the data for sending so that the receiver will be able to you know reconvert and reassemble it when it gets it so the frame also uses an eta type field okay an eta type it, 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 remember we discussed two types of ethernet frames um the 802.1 and the ethernet frame so one of them uses ETA field, the other one uses a type field. But basically, both of them are to describe which of the IP the protocols in the network layer that the packet came from. The same thing that the network layer did by specifying which of the protocols in the transport layer that the segment came from. So this will help the receiver when it gets the information to know who to send the information back up to when it's 
climbing up the, la the layer. So at the data link layer, a cycle redundancy check is performed on the frame. And then the answer of the CRC is placed in the frame check sequence field found in the trailer of the frame. What that means is, is um, after encapsulating this type, the eta or the type field in it, it will also perform a cyclic redundancy check on the frame. It will run a CRC check on the frame to be sure that the frame has a particular size and then it will put the answer of that CRC, it will encapsulate it in a particular field. And by doing that, its own encapsulation of the data link layer is complete. The frame is now ready to be handed down to the physical layer one bit at a time to the physical layer. So once it's handed out to the physical layer, the physical layer will now use bit timing to encode the data into digital signals. So you know all these ones are just you know logical one on zeros. It's at the, it's at the physical layer that everything is now converted into voltage signals that will be sent through through the wires through the cables to the receiving device to the sending device and things like that so every device on the network segment will synchronize every device on the network will synchronize with the clock and extract the one zeros from the digital signal because you know when when this guy is sending a message okay just with what we discussed with um, broadcast domain everybody is going to receive it and when they receive it they will check if the message is destined for them. If the message is not destined destined for them, they will drop the message. But if it is destined for them, they will process the message. How do we know if this is destined for them? From the source and destination hardware addresses that are encapsulated at the network layer. Those guys now will help them to know if the message is for them or not. And when it is not for them, they will drop it if it's for them they will process it when they discover that the message is for them they will run a crc check that same cyclic redundancy check that the hosts or the sender performed before sending and put the answer when they receive it they will do their own crc and then compare their own answer to the answer that is inside the one that the host did if the answer that is inside if their own answer is the same with the one that the host did then the packet has no error the frame will be okay and then they continue processing but if not they will know that there is a problem somewhere if everything turns out to be all good the host will check the destination address to see if the frame is for them so that's that is basically how the thing moves from one layer to the other layer and how it you know it goes on from a, uh, a sender to a receiver we are still going to look or still discuss more about it as we go down 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 in the book but at least for now have a good uh, uh, just a background idea as to how the encapsulation process takes place and how data is prepared at each of the layers the control information the pdus that are added the things that are you know added in order to ensure that the message goes smoothly so the next thing we're going to look at is the three layer hierarchical model okay we mentioned about the seven layer osi model but then the three layer hierarchy so every network scenario take for instance something like this can be di divided into three basic layers and we are going to see what those layers stand for and each and every one of them what they do at the different layers now basically cisco defines three layers of hierarchy for every network and these are the three layers there is the core layer okay that's the uppermost layer there is the distribution layer and then there is the access layer okay now the core layer is what you can call the backbone that's where the main thing is we we'll look at them one after the other the distribution layer is where you do your routing all the routings all the to locate from network to network whereas the access layer is where the switching takes place that's where you now 
detect that okay particular host is here and then you send the information to that host so i will take care of this in the last video that is to come so that we will know that after that last video will be done with 